In this example video, I'm going to walk you through how to do the FIFO cost flow method under the perpetual inventory system. So we have this grid that's set up and there's three very distinct sections of that grid. So the first one is our purchases. So anytime that we purchase inventory, we're going to update that here. In that middle section, it's our cost of goods or cost of merchandise sold. So anytime we sell any of our inventory, it's going to go in there. And then finally, we have our inventory section. So anytime we've purchased inventory or sold inventory, we need to be updating our inventory levels. Remember, this is the perpetual inventory system. So we're constantly updating our inventory levels every time a purchase is made, every time a sale is made. And remember, things are happening in chronological order in real time when we're doing the perpetual inventory system. So we have our data over here on the right. So on April 1st, it says we have some beginning inventory. We have 120 units that each cost us $26 per unit. Remember, we're focusing on the cost side here, not the sales price that we're selling it to our customer for. So we ended March with some inventory left over, which means we're beginning April with some. So it goes right into our inventory section. We have 120 units that each cost $26 per unit. So as of April 1st, we have $3,120 worth of inventory sitting in my warehouse ready to be sold to my customers. So on March 31st, if I had prepared a balance sheet, we would have seen that value sitting in my current asset section for my inventory of $3,120. On the 10th, we're going to make a sale of 90 units. So we got to go to our cost of goods or merchandise sold section and we're selling 90 units. So every time you make a sale, you want to look to the previous day's inventory. What do we have available to sell to our customers? So we had 120 units. Each one of those cost us $26 per unit. And someone's coming in on the 10th and wanting 90 of those. So first in, first out, the first items available to sell to our customers are the first ones sold. So that means we're gonna sell all 90 of those units at $26 per unit is the cost. So the cost of that sale would be $2,340. Anytime we make a purchase or a sale, we have to update our inventory. So we previously had 120 units at $26 per unit, and we just sold 90 of them. So that means we have 30 units left at a per unit cost of $26 per unit. So at the end of our business day on April 10th, our inventory is worth $780. On the 15th, we're going to make a purchase. We have to go to our purchases section. We are buying 140 units. Each one of those units is costing us $28 per unit. So in total, that purchase is costing us $3,920. This is very important. Every time that you make a purchase, we have to update our inventory. But in order to update our inventory, we have to carry down the inventory that we had from the previous day because that hasn't gone away. And we need to keep building these layers of inventory so that when we're applying the FIFO or when we get to another example of the LIFO method, we know which layer of inventory to pull from. So we previously had 30 units that each cost $26 per unit or a total cost of $780. We haven't made a sale between the 10th and the 15th, so we still have those units sitting in our inventory. So we still wanna carry that down with us. And then we just add a new layer. So think of it like another box of inventory. We have a separate box of inventory that has 140 units in there. Each one of those cost us $28 per unit for a value of $3,920 for that box of inventory. So again, remember, perpetual inventory is constantly updating. We always want to know how much inventory we have every time we make a purchase or a sale. So that's why we're bringing down that previous balance just from the prior day. Notice I'm not going back to April 1st. I'm simply going to the date right before um, the, the 15th, which was April 10th, that we had a transaction. And then we're adding a new layer. We can't combine them and just say we have have 170 units because those units were purchased at a different cost price. So we have to keep them separated. 
On the 20th, we're going to sell 110 units. So we got to go to our cost section here, and we're going to sell 110 units. We're following the FIFO method. First items in are the first items out. So anytime we make a sale, we look to the previous day's level of inventory. So we have two separate boxes or two different levels of inventory. First in is our first out. First in is that top layer of inventory. So that means we're gonna sell all 30 of those units. We're gonna empty out that box of inventory and we're gonna pull those 30 units out. But remember, this customer wants 110 units. So I empty that box that had 30 in it and now I need more. So they wanted 110. I just accounted for 30 of those units by emptying that first box that was available to sell to our customers, which means that I need 80 more units. First in is first out. I've emptied this box, so now I'm moving to my next layer of inventory. And each one of those was at a cost point of $28 per unit. So in total, the cost of the sale for this item would be $3,020 have to update our inventory. I had 30 units at $26 per unit. I've sold all 30 units at $26 per unit. So I don't have any of those anymore. I had 140 at 28. I sold 80 of them, which means I have 60 units left. That cost us $28 per unit to purchase. So at the end of our business day on the 20th, we have an inventory value of $1,680. We then make another sale on the 24th. So we go into the cost section here of our goods or merchandise sold and we're selling 40 units. First in is our first out. So we look to the previous day's levels of inventory and we only had one level of inventory at the end of our business on the 20th. So all 40 of those units are coming out of that box of inventory at a cost of $28 per unit. So my cost of my merchandise that's being sold on the 24th is $1,120 have to update inventory. I had 60 units. I just sold 40 of them. I only have 20 units left that each cost us $28 per unit. So at the end of business on the 24th, my ending inventory value is $560. On the 30th, we make a final purchase. We're buying 160 units at $30 per unit, so our cost has increased again. So our total cost of this purchase is $4,800. Anytime we make a purchase or a sale, we have to update inventory. And remember, when you've made a purchase, the first thing that we do when we update our inventory is we pull down from just the previous day what we previously had in inventory, because we still have that. There was no sale that was made between the 24th and the 30th. And then we add to that our new purchase. So we get our total. So our total for our cost is gonna be the sum of this total cost column. So we would sum together all of the cost of those goods that we sold. When you get to figuring out your ending value of inventory, you're only looking at what your inventory was that last day. So that last day, we had 180 units, and in total, we had $5,360 in value. So that $6,480 would be on our income statement in that new multi-step income statement, and our ending inventory value would be on our balance sheet in that current asset section.